Travelling at 40 knots is normal for a modern America's cut boat. At that speed, the wind that the crew will experience on their faces could be as high as 60 knots as they head into it. Little surprise then that like a racing driver or a bobsleigh team, they keep their heads and bodies low down to reduce drag. The trouble is, is that for those of us watching, it makes it pretty difficult to know what they're doing. So what are the crew roles aboard an AC-75? Back in the day when America's Cup boats were displacement monohulls with 20-tonne lead keels slumped beneath them, there were 17 crew. Today there are just eight. Back then they were plodding along at around 12 knots, if you were lucky. Today they're doing three to four times that speed with half the crew. Even in the last cup we had a glimpse of what they're up to as they cross the boat from side to side in tacks and jibes. Today everyone has their place and they stay there for the duration of the race. So to find out who does what and why I headed to the British Ineos Britannia base. On board an AC75 we have symmetrical sides of the boat where we have four sailors on one side and four sailors on the other side. So we have eight sailors on board the whole time. Of those eight sailors Four people get to have all the fun, in my opinion. So we'll have two helmsmen and two pilot trimmers. So the helmsmen, it's obvious, they drive the boat. They can help trim sails fly the boat. They have options to do that, uh, if so needed. And we have pilot trimmers, and that's fairly self-explanatory, right? They're trimming the sails, helping fly the boat. So on the 75, I'm a trimmer pilot. Um, so it's kind of a combined role where we, we swap between piloting and so flying the boat essentially um, and trimming the sails. So it's kind of a, yeah, we, we switch roles um, depending on the scenario. And you're trimming both sails, main and jib? Uh, prim primarily the main on, on the AC-75. And how, when you're trimming the main, that's presumably it's when you're on the windward side? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the windward side, we end up trimming the main, um, providing kind of performance feedback, um, kind of helping, helping out the helm in that, in that sense. Um, and then to, to, on the leeward side, we're, we're kind of focused on the piloting, uh, making sure that we're flying the boat at, at the optimum height um, to get the most out of it. And then we have the legends that are the cyclos, and we <laughs> are the guys that power the boat. Uh, we call ourselves the Sherpas. We get to carry all the stuff to the top of the mountain while they stick the flag in the top. Um, and we power all of the sails. So everything below the water is battery powered because those foils weigh 1.25 tonnes. We're not lifting those up and down with our hydraulics, with our legs. But we contribute all the power into the hydraulic system that moves the sails. Fundamentally, the more dynamic you are, with the sails, the faster the boat goes. The more dynamic you are the sails, the more oil you need to go around the boat. So the equation is the fitter you are, the more oil you move, the faster you go, sadly. So you have to be <laughs> as fit as a butcher's dog. And each one of those cyclos, I presume across all the teams, has a slightly different kind of input into the boat. I kind of put American Magic to one side because they've obviously gone down this different route of recumbent cycling facing aft, so I can't. Well, I can't speak about any team, what they're doing, but we have the ability for different cyclos to do different things on the boat, if so needed, yeah. And the helmsmen do identical jobs, but it's the one on the windward side that's driving, is that right? Uh, the one on the windward side is driving, but you would have seen in the last cup where Prada uh, started this trend, and it was very smart, and full hats off to them. There are moments where for example, when you are on port and ducking another boat or turning down at a windward mark where there is a fair bit of wheel passing that goes on and the communication around my wheel, your wheel, small duck here, my wheel, okay, your and wheel. that's because when you're on, on line you of sight, can't vision, see through vision, to the other side, vision. can Because the yeah. sails are sailed There you go, down and everyone deck. has cameras here, there and everywhere to, to help the helmsman and the trimmers see stuff. But there is a fair bit of wheel passing that goes on and the communication around that is like, as you'd imagine, super important. You're driving a car at 50, 60 miles an hour and you're going, oh, okay, you have this bend and da da da. I mean, it's, it's quite unique in sport, actually, when mm. you think about it. Mm. So what you would have seen in the last cup is 
someone running from one side of the boat to the other, across all teams actually. So even though Prada had fixed helmsmen, their wing trimmer or mainsail trimmer did cross the boat always. Team New Zealand skinned it slightly differently, but fundamentally in the last cup, the trimmer always crossed. And with a lot of teams other than Prada, the helmsman crossed as well. Um, now everybody's settled into a world where the, you kind of split the trimmer and pilot role. So the reason you don't want to cross the boat is aerodynamically is bad. And it also takes a lot of time for a human to get from A to B. And it also telegraphs that you're about to maneuver, which is a big thing now. Um, and also there's a risk, isn't there? Because a few a people risk, have actually. gone over the side. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, yeah, I didn't really think about that. But yeah, it's <laughs> running, running, across, running across a boat for an early jibe but a windward might turn down, you're doing 50 knots. You don't want to be going out the back of that. It's unique that on these boats now where we end up with crew staying in, in cockpits, um, I think there's a lot of kind of a swapping of, of roles that happens depending on what tack you're on. Um, and it's yeah, very unique in terms of normal sailing. Um, it's kind of unusual that you would decide to swap roles based on, on what tack you're on. But it is quite natural. It's all the, the, the dynamics of flying and trimming. It, it's all very kind of interlinked in a, in a way. Um, and it's important for sure to have the understanding of what the other person's up to. So in that sense, it's actually quite natural having this kind of sw swap between trim and, and pilot. Um, and that's kind of the, the path that, that we've gone down as a team. But having two of each also means making sure that both sides work in harmony. And to make life even more complicated, all the crew, whether they're cyclors, trimmers, pilots or helmsmen, are taking on a variety of roles during the race. Let's put it like this, all of the afterguard so the, the, trimmer, the trimmer pilots can't drive. I'm sure they'd love a little wheel to give it a go, but they can't drive. But beyond that, we have set up our HMI, our human machine in, interface, so that we can pass various roles around the boat, depending on uh, situations that we're in on, on the race course. And there's a lot for those four guys to take on. And that's the same across all the teams. Across all the teams, their four afterguard have to drive the boat, they have to fly the boat, they have to trim the sails, they have to do the tactics. That's a lot to take on across those four. So you have to be flexible and you have to work out how you do different situ race situations in different configurations with, with those four people. So it's not only the helms that are, that are kind of divvying up the roles between what tack they're on. Um, it's also the trimmers and um, I think that's something that we've been developing over, over the time in T6 and also over the time uh, we've had now on the 75. Um, just to make sure that we are both dialed in, we're kind of aiming for the same thing and actually essentially to make sure that when it comes to racing, it doesn't require much if any comms between the trimmers because the reality is a lot of that kind of communication bandwidth will be taken up by by the helms positioning where the other boat is the stuff that actually is really going to make the difference um come the, come the match racing does it get competitive between you do you come out and, and think right i'm going to go quicker than him on this <laughs> <laughs> no i think i mean i think it is the other actually the other interesting element of having the combined role is that you do you learn you can kind of learn different techniques so you can actually spot there'll be, you'll spot asymmetries in what we do in maneuvers and actually okay that that actually is working quite well and then you can adapt to that um, so in that sense it actually accelerates the learning of, of the group because maybe something different is happening on one one tack and you see actually that he's flying it a bit different to how i am there um, and you can pick up on that and say okay i should let's try doing that on on this tack as well so um, in that sense it's um, there's a lot to be gained from kind of having the dual the dual role i, I guess though at some point it's probably not as straightforward as that because you could end up with an asymmetric setup to the weather, yep, as in that's true. the waves aren't necessarily yep. going to come from the same angle on yep. each tag. Yep. That must really throw a few spanners in the yeah. works a bit. And, uh, and to be fair, that's actually quite, quite common here, um, especially over the last kind of month or so where there's been kind of this trend of an easterly kind of swell that's coming in and you have a suddenly breeze and all of a sudden you've, you've got quite an offset and um, that's something that we see quite a bit where one one jive downwind might be going straight straight down the waves and one straight across them so it, it that becomes a challenge for sure and, and you do then end up sailing um, a bit differently on, on both tacks um, and and in a way that at that point having one person that's locked into 
okay, well, I sail down, I'm, I'm kind of, today I'm saying downwind, I'm going straight down the waves. They dial that technique in nice. The other person's across the waves all day and they dial that one in nice. And it's not, in a way, it almost makes it a little bit easier that you're, you're constantly doing one technique, the other guy's doing the other one because he's going down the waves and you're not having to switch between as you go from jibe to jibe. So, right. um, but yeah, the, the waves, is, I mean, it's been a, a big feature um, here in Barcelona ever since we've, we've been here. Um, and we'll, we'll wait and see what we, what we get in, in a few weeks' time. <laughs> in the last America's Cup with Ineos Britannia, we did a really nice job of integrating uh, finger buttons onto our grinding handles so we could input into the boat um, last time round, and we've learned a lot from that. I think there is a world where you're cycling and you can do bits and bobs if, if so needed, whether that's happened across all the teams, who knows. Um, mm. We've definitely noticed trends of certain cyclists poking their heads up at various moments when in certain maneuvers and that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you what we're up to. You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. A sustainable future. Yamar 2.0.